Hey, it's Scott, and today we're just going to go through a quick walkthrough of the OC T7 monitor, which I have right here. We'll show you how to work it using this little joystick here, and also what's built into the menus, custom functions, things like that, exactly how to use this monitor inside and out. If you want to see a full review of this monitor, I do think that this is one of the best monitors on the market at the moment. Uh, so if you want to see that, I'll put a link on screen and down in the video description below. But in this video, we're just gonna talk about how to use it and show you exactly what's built into here. Like I said, there's only one single joystick here. Of course, you can push it up, down, left, right, and you can click it. Uh, and you can also hold it down for a few seconds and all of those different uh, actions are going to control the monitor in different ways. But we'll start off from the simple uh, how to navigate through your custom functions and everything when you're in just this standard mode here. Pushing the joystick will bring up your custom function menu and these are the things that you have loaded in here. We'll show you in a second how to load your custom functions into here as well as how to build a new page because you can create different pages of custom functions in this monitor. Uh, as you cycle up and down through these custom functions, you can see their title pop up next to their icon and just pushing the joystick will then turn it on and off, on and off. You can see there's a little arrow next to the function name here and if you follow that and push the joystick to the right, it will jump into the sub menu to customize that particular custom function and the top one is always going to be to enable it and disable it. You can just push left and right to enable and disable it. And then you can scroll down and again push left and right to adjust the parameters of that particular function. We'll go through each of these custom functions and show exactly what kind of customization is built into them in a moment. Uh, but for now, let's just continue going through these uh, basic operations. From here, if you push left, it's just going to switch that particular parameter. So to back out of this sub menu, you'll want to click again and it will go back to here. And again, keep in mind, you can just push to turn these on and off uh, very quickly. Down at the bottom, you have the plus sign and that's going to be to add a new tool. With this, although there is a arrow here, you wanna click it to add a new tool and it will bring up all the different tools that are built into this monitor. You can choose any of them to add into your uh, custom function menu on this page. You've got aspect ratios, you've got safe markers, center marker, cross hatch, uh, then in exposure section, you've got false color, zebra, histogram, waveform, vector. In your focus section, you've got both focus assist and focus peaking. You've got your look, which is your LUT. Uh, you've got audio meters, you've got SDI metadata if this was the G7 and it has an SDI connection as well. This is the T7 which only has HDMI so that is grayed out. And then you've got your image resize and again we'll take a look at exactly what all of these do and what kind of customization is built into them in just a moment. If you want to cancel adding a new function just click left and it will back out of that. To back out of this whole menu here and just get back to shooting, once again push left and it will show you the page that you're on, but then that will disappear after a few seconds. When you're just in this standard shooting mode, pushing right and left on the joystick will bring you between your pages. You can see down here between page one and page two, and that will work pretty straightforward. Pushing this up will then jump into your zoom, and first it jumps into a two times zoom, and then a four times zoom. And in either of these modes, if you then click the joystick, you can see as this icon changes down here, you can then move around the image just like that with the joystick, very straightforward. If you want to then uh, go back, you can click it again to jump out of that navigation. And then from here again, you can either go up to four times or back down to uh, zero times, which is just your standard uh, view. Pushing down on the joystick in your standard view will bring up the backlight or you know the monitor's brightness settings. Right now I have it on zero because for this video, if I put it any brighter than that, it's gonna start getting overexposed on the screen, but you can just go right uh, or left here to adjust the brightness from zero up to 10. And this is a 3000 nit monitor, so that is very, very bright. Um, but for now, zero is more than enough. To back out of this, you can then just push up. So pushing down will bring that up, pushing up will back out of it, and it's that simple. So now we're gonna get into the long pushes and long pushing to the left for three seconds will bring you into the system wide uh, monitor settings menu. So you can see up top, you can select your input. Again, if you have the SDI version, you can select if you want SDI or HDMI input up there, but this is grayed out on the T7. You've got controls for your volume, your backlight, which we just saw. You can also quickly access uh, in the main shooting menu. You've got your display rotation and for screen rotate, you can also choose auto. You've got your anamorphic settings. You've got your DSLR scale. Uh, you've got your user status display. You've got your calibration LUT. Uh, this is just to calibrate your monitor. 
uh, and I found that out of the box. It looks really great. The colors and everything look great. It looks as I expect it should look, but if you do want to calibrate it to match uh, what your expectations are or whatever particular camera you're working with, you can do that in here quite in depth, of course. You can change your language. Uh, you've got your monitor information, so like the name, the serial number in your version. You can do your firmware update through here. Keep going, you've got your load LUTs here. This is where you would, of course, load LUTs. And then your factory reset. Most of this is pretty straightforward, but we'll just take a quick look at the load LUT interface. If you, again, click this, it will jump into that submenu. Be careful because if you push to the right, it will then jump back into the main shooting mode. So again, holding left for three seconds, you'll come to the monitor settings. Let's go back down to uh, LUT, there it is. Click to enter that submenu and then you can uh, scroll to the right or the left to adjust that parameter. Let's jump into here and then push to the right to execute the load LUT file. And it'll take a second to come into this interface here. You've got your SD card LUT files, user LUT, camera LUT, calibration LUT. So you have some different types. I'm going to set mine as a user LUT uh, and let's just click that. You can just click here. This is gonna go into your SD card, which I do have in the monitor. I've got a few loaded in here. Um, these are all already loaded into my monitor, so I'm just gonna leave them, but this is where you would just scroll down and click what you want to load into the monitor, and it's as simple as that. Go up to return, go up to return, and then you can see down here, it shows if you push to the left, it will exit out of this interface. So while we're in this menu, I will show you just a couple more details of some of these options here. Again, click on the display rotate to enter the submenu, and you can see the image behind that uh, submenu, so you can see the effect on your image. Uh, when you're in screen rotate, if you scroll to the left, it will go between 180 and 0, which you can see the effect right here on screen. And if you scroll to the right, it will then enter the auto option, which is kind of cool. Image rotate, uh, if you go 180 there, you can see the effect. And scrolling to the right doesn't do anything. So image rotate does not have uh, the auto option, but screen rotate does. To back out, you're going to click to select your choice and it will come back into this option again because when you're here, scrolling to the left is going to toggle your different options. So clicking is going to back out to this main menu here. For anamorphic options, you've got 1 times 1.33, 1 1.5, 1.66, and 2 times as well as 2 times mag. For DSLR at scale, you've got options for like the Canon 5D Mark II, 7D, and none. Those are cameras that will send out a bit of a different uh, HDMI signal, so you'll want to use this to get a kind of normal uh, sized image on your screen. And again, everything else is pretty straightforward. So we're going to push right to go back into our main shooting mode. And our next option is going to be long push to the right for three seconds. And that will allow you to add a new my set, a new page. So once this image comes up, you're going to click to select that. And now you can see I'm on page three, which I did not have before. And clicking to bring up this uh, custom functions menu, you can see that I have nothing in there. So obviously you can choose the option to add a new tool. And I'm going to use this menu to now show you the customization of each and every tool that's in that menu. We'll start off with your aspect ratios. Now jumping into this sub menu, enable them so you can see the effect. You've got the ratios, which we showed you already, 4 to 3. 1.85 to 1, 2.39 to 1, 16 by 9, and custom. And then custom, you can go in here and choose by percent uh, your width and height, and you can go in anything from, I believe, 0 to 100%. And again, this is something the width that has been handy for me when I've been shooting uh, standard video, but the customer also does want the option for vertical video. I can turn on the uh, custom aspect ratio markers, and then I can dial that in, so that way it will match 1080 cut out of the center of a 4K image. And then I can kind of see and make sure that my framing is gonna be all right enough. Not a way that I like to shoot, but I have had customers that wanted that before. So it's really nice on these OC monitors to be able to dial that in in a really, really detailed way. As for settings, you've then got the matte option, which you can see now, which blacks out the outside of the aspects, but you can see you know, a little bit around the image. So you can still see what's going on, what you're cutting out, what you're missing. And then you've got the line option, which is just gonna show your white lines uh, and no actual mat over the outside of that. So I like the mat option, but uh, you do have lots of choices here how you can customize your settings. On all of these settings, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see the trash can, just click that, and then you can confirm to delete that particular tool from your menu. Next up is your safe markers, and jumping into the submenu, turning it on, you've got your format for 16 by 9, 14 by 9, uh, 4 by 3, but of course can't see anything if we don't turn it on, so let's turn that on, uh, and you can see again how this changes through there for my safe markers. We'll leave it on 16 by now for now. So this is your kind of safe zone within that 16 by nine uh, format. 
title, you can also turn it on. So you've got different safe markers for your action and your title safe areas. So that's really nice. Again, you can go in and if you're shooting 14 by nine, you can set those. If you're shooting four by three, you can set those. It might be nice to see a little bit more, maybe for example, some of the uh, wider uh, modes, for example, if you're shooting in 2.39 to one, then it would be nice to see that added to here too. But for now, you've got these three modes for your safe markers, as well as separate options for both action and title safe areas. Next up is your center marker, and it's pretty straightforward, just enable or disable. Again, it might be nice to be able to have some customization and maybe the size or something of this, but it, it's perfect for me, so I don't really have any big complaints. Then you've got your crosshatch, and again, it's pretty straightforward. You can turn it on, and then you can select from two regions, two lines, basically, you could say, to, I believe it's nine. Yes, up to nine, which is crazy, but... Next up, going into the exposure settings, false color is a pretty interesting one because typically you'd get your false color like this and you do have the scale down the bottom. Not only the scale, but you can see a little gray scale on the bottom too, so it's just a little bit more easy to understand for people who are new to false color. But uh, you can see here, there is another option in these settings for uh, spectrum. And that means that right now you're seeing the full spectrum of false color, but you can also go in and set false colors for specific camera uh, log formats. So like this is Sony S log three, zero is where you'd want to expose for, you know, perfect your, your middle gray. And then plus one is, you know, one stop over. And you can also see some colors here for clipping and crushing your blacks. Uh, and as you scroll through there, there's a lot of different cameras built into here. And these false colors are built specifically for the way that you would usually shoot at uh, your middle gray and plus one exposure for that particular log format, which is really, really useful. So even if your camera is not in here, you can then go through and find something that's pretty close to uh, what would be a good exposure for your particular camera. And uh, you can just really quickly see on a gray scale image, the key values. So just at a quick glance without thinking too much, you can really spot if your skin tones are on or if your uh, middle gray is on. And I, I really love having this built into here. After that, you have your zebras, and this is again pretty straightforward. You can turn them on and then choose the level that you want them to kick in at from 0 to 100 IRE. You can then go into your histogram. You can customize it uh, in terms of your Luma or RGB type of histogram here. And then you can go and choose the location uh, all around the screen. And you can also choose the opacity from uh, a few different settings here. Next up is your waveform, and it's uh, pretty similar to the histogram. You've got Luma RGB and then RGB Parade. So you have three types. You can choose the size of the waveform, so you can spread it out a little bit more or all the way across the screen, which is nice, um, especially in a, a extra setting that I will show you in just a second. Uh, and then you can, let's go back to the smaller size. When it's smaller, you can then choose its position, either in that small size or when you're in the uh, middle size, you can choose a little bit. Uh, of where it's positioned. Not as much flexibility as when it's small, but you can do that when it's large. It's just going to be right there at the bottom. And then you can choose the opacity as well, just like the histogram. Finally, you've got your vectors. And again, that's pretty straightforward. Turn them on and you've got your location and you've got your opacity. Next up is your focus features. And I'm actually going to turn on a look first because it just does help with these focus assist features. Look again is your LUT. You can select it, turn it on. And then you have options, like I said, for your camera and your user modes. So when you load a lot, you can choose to load it into your camera menu, your user menu. Um, I chose my LUTs to uh, load into the user menu. So you can see here user LUT one and under there a little bit gray, but you can see the name. Uh, so this is AR33 default. Then I have uh, LC709 default. I have a couple in there, but you can see the names uh, right in there. I've loaded four. So from five and onwards. Uh, has no name because there's no LUT in there. You've got up to 16 LUTs that you can load into here, which is pretty nice. We're just gonna turn on user one for now, which is my AR33 LUT. So now we'll go in and add our focus assist first. Let's turn on focus assist. And this is what most monitors would call focus peaking. Uh, usually you can see here that you've got some different colors. You've got standard, which is white. I actually like using the white focus peaking. You've got red, green, and blue, pretty standard there. And then uh, you've got the sensitivity and you can dial this in from one, which is very, very insensitive, all the way up to 10, which is a little bit crazy. So let's leave it around five for now. Sorry about that. You can then uh, turn on a black and white background and this will just turn the whole image black and white, which is pretty cool. Um, but do be aware that even in this black and white mode, the peaking, you can switch the colors uh, and you'll see, you know, a little bit more or less depending on the channel, of course, between blue, uh, green and red and standard. Standard probably stands out the most. I'd say green is the next uh, easiest to see when you're in this black and white mode. 
Um, it would be nice in a future firmware update if they let the peaking color stay on while the image goes black and white. And I have told OC about that. So hopefully that will come in a future firmware update to really, really, really just complete the full circle on this monitor. But it is nice that you have the option at least for a black and white, which is a little bit less distracting. We're gonna turn this off for now, but leave it in the menu. I'm gonna go ahead and add the second focus assist uh, option, which is peaking. They call it peaking. And this is basically just ultra sharpening of your image. And I'm not sure how easy this will be able to see on the video, but you can again in, uh, dial in the intensity from zero, which is just like your standard image all the way up to 10, which really ultra sharpens your image. And I think probably if you can see it on the video, you could see it the most right here in the texture of this um, stand here. So at zero, it looks pretty soft. And, um, and as you dial in the intensity, you can see more of that detail coming out. So it's not really your traditional focus peaking, but you can still see really where the edge is. And we're going to leave that on 10 for now, just to really demonstrate this. Um, but like, as I change my focus, even though there's no color, you can see really easily when that comes into focus. And it's, I think, less distracting than your traditional colored focus peaking. Um, but of course, you can then go in and combine this with your focus assist, which is, you know, really going to up that amount of color that you can see in your image. So this is the same uh, level five intensity focus assist that we had before. But you can see that it's a lot more clear now because the sharpening of the image is actually boosted as well with our peaking settings. So now you can then lower this and you can kind of dial them both in to get a good combination of focus assist and peaking where you can get a really nice balance if you want to use it that way. Let's go ahead and delete those for now. And next up you have your look. We already did that. So we're going to skip ahead to audio meters. Audio meters you can turn on and off as well as choose the location bottom left or bottom right. And then you can adjust the opacity. And because this uh, monitor is a little bit taller than your traditional 16 by 9 image, the audio meters come in in the little black area that is actually outside of your image. So it's not on top of your image, which is actually really nice because it's you know less intrusive. Then you would have your SDI metadata, but again, we don't have SDI on the T7. So finally, you have your image resize, which is actually pretty useful if you're setting up a page specifically for exposure, for example, where having the largest possible image to see your framing isn't quite as critical. So what this does, as you choose it and then turn it on, you can choose the location of where that rescaled image is going to be. I'm just going to leave it on the top left for now. And then when you have functions like, for example, your, let's turn on the waveform. Turn that on. Now it's going to be outside of your image. So you can combine that and let's add some more. Let's add, let's say false color because we're saying theoretically this is, you know, your uh, exposure page. Let's go add the vector. You can choose the location of that. So you can move things around. Of course, like I said, let's move the vector to the top right. Let's move our waveforms. Now we can make them large and it's going to be all the way across the bottom, but it's not covering our image. So it's okay that it's large. And then let's say, let's add a, our, our histogram as well. Turn it on and adjust the location so it's not covering our vectors. And here you've got a bunch of tools built in for exposure settings, but it's not covering your image, which is really, really nice. This is personally how I use one of my pages is just for nailing my exposure and I can check my white balance and things using the uh, waveforms. Now it's on Luma, but I would set, you know, RGB waveforms and you can nail your white balance just by looking at that. Um, if you have something gray or whatever in the image, this is really, really useful to be able to crowd so much in here uh, and get so much functionality out of a single page. And then again, you can see here, this is my page that I've already set up. Just go back to shooting, get your exposure, go back to shooting, get your exposure. And it's just really, really, really useful. So anyway, you've set up a few pages now and I realize uh, I already have my exposure page on page two, so I don't need this. So if you push the joystick down for a few seconds, we'll bring up the option to delete this page. So we'll click confirm. And it does take a little while to delete the page, maybe probably 10 seconds or so. But then you can delete that page and you can clear it up if you want to build another page or if you just don't need it. And now we're back to just my two main pages and they will loop around. So you can see one, two, one, two, one, two. Um, so this is really, really a powerful system considering there's only one single uh, joystick here. And, uh, I think it works pretty intuitively. It may seem like there's a lot of functions built in here to remember, but most of them are pretty, um, I guess you could say intuitive. Like I said, you know, up and down, left and right, it works as it should work. And you can click it to jump into something like this, click to turn it on and off. It's pretty straightforward. Once you start using the monitor for a very short time, you'll get used to it very, very quickly. 
If I missed something, I apologize, but hopefully that gave you a good idea of everything that is built into this monitor, all of the customization that you have over these different custom functions and uh, how to navigate it if you're wondering about how this single joystick works. Again, if you wanna see a more in-depth review, I do have that and I will link it down in the video description, so check that out. Otherwise, if you have any questions or comments about anything that was presented here today, let me know down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, thank you for watching.